Hello and a warm welcome to Ion Gauteng. I'm Lionel Skink. Thanks for joining us. South Africa is basking in the glory of being the foremost paleo sciences center in the world. This is thanks to some remarkable discoveries made at Malapa, which is located in the cradle of humankind world heritage site right here in Gauteng. Now today, Malapa is one of the richest early hominid sites ever discovered. On today's show, we ask what are the opportunities for paleo tourism and how can the origins industry continue to thrive as a separate entity. Now let's take a look back at the discovery and announcement of Australopithecus sediba, the most complete early human skeleton ever discovered. The cradle of humankind, situated just 40 kilometers out of Johannesburg, is one of the richest sources of hominid fossils in the world. This World Heritage Site has become a magnet for scientists who want to answer the age-old question of where the human species comes from. The Cradle hosted a press conference with expectation of news so big it would change the way we view our distant past. The man of the moment, Professor Lee Berger, who stumbled upon what is probably the most significant find in his career, a skeleton of what is perhaps a new species of human ancestor. Almost two million years old, the discovery has got the world talking. When we find something this complete, no matter whether someone agrees with my team's interpretation of these fossils, these fossils are what they are, and they will stand as an extraordinary piece of evidence for the evolution of humankind on the African continent. The site, which has been named Malama, is currently being dug for more remains. Professor Berger has enlisted the help of some of the best scientists from all continents to complete the skeletons. There are tons of South African scientists, there are other African scientists involved in this, and there are the very best people from other continents, and it has been an extraordinary team. It's why we were able to get this quality of research out this quickly. The discovery could be the impetus to a relatively new form of tourism, paleotourism. That these fossils were found in our backyard brings to the fore the greater responsibility South Africa has to promote this area of science. Now joining us in studio is the man of the moment. He's got a very long title. He's reader in human evolution and the public understanding of science in the Institute for Human Evolution and uh, the School of Geosciences at the University of the Witwatersrand, Professor Lee Berger. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, sir. And the program manager at the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site, Mr. Max Pillay. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and thanks for uh, joining us on Ion Gauteng. All right, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with Professor Lee Berger. Obviously, very, very exciting times in your field of work. Um, is it coincidental that these fossils or these remains have been actually found at the site or the geographical site in Gauteng in particular? Is it a coincidence or is it just one of those things? Well, it, it is and it isn't a, mm -hmm. a coincidence. I, just watching that video, it brought back extraordinary memories from two and a half years ago. And, but really what's happened since then is that the research uh, has just exploded and, mm. and the number of discoveries, the number of scientific articles has continued. The team has probably doubled since that time. Maybe more than a, a hundred scientists from around the world are involved. And the coincidence of that discovery is, is in part because the bedrock is located right here outside of Johannesburg, which okay. gives us this strategic geological coincidence uh, mm. that allows us to make these discoveries. But the discoveries themselves, while they might look like luck when they're found, you know, a nine-year-old and a dog picks the first one up, uh, the fact of the matter is is that, that it's because of the sustained scientific investigation uh, supported by South African government scientists here that, that spans back uh, probably almost 70, 80 years in this area that gives us this fundamental strategic advantage. It's why the science should be done from here. Mm -hmm. It's why places like Vitz have this as a core focus of scientific investigation, and it's why you're seeing places like Kauteng government recognize this as a strategic area of advantage, and the national government recognizes this as a strategic science that the entire world's interested mm -hmm. in. Uh, I want to speak, bring you in, Mr. Pillay. Obviously, as the uh, professor spoke about the fundamental strategic advantage, um, on the announcement of the um, discovery of Australopithecus adiba, we had uh, the state deputy president, we had at the time, I think it was the, the deputy minister of science and technology at the time, and we also had the Gauteng government. So it's a national thing, but obviously it's, it's in your province. Absolutely. And, and uh, Gauteng says it starts here. What does that yeah. mean? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, um, it starts here is, is I mean, we, you know, everybody living today can trace their ancestry back to Africa, mm -hmm. and um, it starts here as a footing, um, you know, um, uh, 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 
cutting tourism logo. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, more than that, um, Lionel, is that, you know, Gauteng Provincial Government has always supported the initiative from the start, uh, supported the, um, the, the nomination of the site as a World Heritage Site. It goes back 12 years now, but longer than that as well. And um, yeah, we, we recognize the importance and the significance of, of, of such, an important, um, su such an important area in our province. Mm -hmm. Speaking to you before you came to the show, you said it's very important that I mentioned that it's a World Heritage Site. How does this sort of make it easy for the Gauteng government to continue to uh, market uh, the province and the site as well as the foremost I mean, uh, anthro, uh, anthro Popeli, anthro anthropological site in the world? Well, our, our responsibility is a dual one, mm. uh, in that uh, we, we manage the World Heritage Site in terms of the World Heritage Convention and in terms of national um, environmental legislation as well. But uh, we also have a, an extremely closely uh, close working relationship with FITS, and uh, it's been like that for, for the last decade, and we actually in collaboration with FITS to, to take that relationship to a higher level. Fantastic. Uh, Professor, there's been a new discovery, uh, new Sediba fossils discovered in rock formation. That actually was um, announced to China, uh, and uh, very interestingly, on a business delegation. Okay, tell us about that. Well, you got to place in perspective that, that the science of paleoanthropology, human origins, is about every body on the planet. It's our story as the entirety of the human species. It does not have, and nor should it be treated as a parochial scientist, science, a science just done here in Gauteng or just in South Africa or just in Africa because it's all of our story. The choice to announce that discovery in China was a critical and strategic one pointing out the global nature of this science. Yeah. We're going to, with this fantastic discovery of a fossil skeleton inside of a block of rock, if I show it to you, it just looks like a block of rock. But with the technology we now have in South Africa, micro CT, CT scanners, we're pushing the boundaries of science. We, it, science, we know that inside of that rock is the remainder of Carabo's skeleton. What we're going to do with that is something that's never been done before. We're going to open the process of this extraction science to the entire world. We're going to do it on the internet. We're going to build a virtual lab at the Maripang site in the cradle of humankind, our, our tourism area. And what we're going to do is open up partner outposts, if you will, of observation studios. And the first one's going into China. Why China? I think it's kind of obvious to anybody <laughs> in the world why China. You've got an audience approaching two billion people that need to understand this message that, that we have here in the province of Gauteng. All right, uh, Max, just uh, very quickly, uh, the, the issue of, um, uh, the incident spoke about paleo tourism. Um, it, it, it sounds like a very new concept. It sounds very foreign to people that are not even familiar with even paleo sciences. Uh, and you have the unenviable task of actually uh, marketing that idea, how successful have you been? Well, I think there's a greater interest now, mm. you know, by, by, the, by the public in general to, um, to want to know w more about their origins, about where they come from, and the story about, about all of us being able to trace our roots back to, mm. to, to Africa. So I think that's picking where, up significantly. Where do those stories come from? Well, nationally and, and, and internationally, we mm. have a lot of, uh, you know, our, our pr uh, prime markets, um, uh, the US, um, the UK, and, and, and some countries in, in Europe as well. But there's also um, increasing amount of visitors mm. from, from the east, from China, from Australia, from India right. as well. So that uh, Marupeng precinct, um, it's going to be it's going to be much bigger and better, I, I suppose. Once, once yeah, uh, yeah. We, yeah, we're currently busy with initiatives to upgrade the, the infrastructure, upgrade mm -hmm. the exhibitions, in uh, you know, in mm. together with the scientists. And there's lots of other projects currently happening, um, you know, as far as tourism development goes. Okay. And and government's objective is to is to manage the site in terms of the the the, the World Heritage Convention okay. and to promote. Mm. I'm glad you spoke, um, Mags, about government. We just want to find out what exactly is government doing in South Africa to uh, encourage the science uh, academically as well. Now let's take a look at this uh, snippet where we saw the opening of Africa's very first paleo sciences center at the University of the Witwatersrand. This is the first paleo science center in Africa. The building will be the home to the Institute for Human Evolution, the Bernard Price Institute, and the James Kitchen Museum.
the national government of South Africa contributed most of the money to renovate this building. We, we're very excited about the facilities uh, that have been developed here. The Department of Science and Technology is part sponsor to this very important uh, project and we believe that the wonderful laboratories, the information technology that we're seeing here will all contribute to improved advances uh, in this very important area for Africa and South Africa. The museum features several life-size animated reconstructions of fossils. This museum is one of the must-see sites for students and tourists from all over the world. The centre will open its doors to members of the public that are curious to know what life was like many years ago. A centre such as this will go some way in popularising paleosciences. One of the uh, sad uh, facts of Africa is we're terrible victims of Afro-pessimism. And so we don't even realise when we have a leading edge in our continent. Paleontology has been somewhat uh, of a science that's been kept out there and hasn't really populated uh, the communities, both in our country and on the continent. And I think what we need to do is use the fact of the origins in Africa as a means of communicating to Africa a consciousness of what the continent has contributed to humankind and humankind's knowledge of themselves. Professor, I saw you nodding your head very vigorously during that insert, agreeing with the minister that it's a science that is pretty much out there, not very popular here. What, according to you, are the problems? That's absolutely the truth. I mean, it is one of those interesting things that you can go to almost anywhere in the world and they know this as our science, as science mm. of human origins. A lot of that's surprisingly because we couldn't talk about the commonality of humankind under the apartheid government. So this is a modern science here in South Africa. It will explode here because once people realize it's about us, it's about where we come from and why we're the way we are, there's no way not to be interested. Mm. Gaz, very quickly, uh, the Marupeng site uh, brings in a thousand school children a month or a year, or, or what, what kind of figures do you guys bring in? Well, um, Marupeng and Stephenton together, you're looking at about 250,000 visitors a year. Wow. Um, including school children, but we do we do uh, sponsor a thousand learners um, every year in August to visit. Uh, mm. And the reason why you sponsor the learners is because it's to open up, you know, open up the science, open up the opportunities that the science presents to 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 young minds, and um, and and to support the the national curriculum as well, which which has evolution as part of its studies now. Okay, fantastic, gentlemen. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we want to find out what is the fascination with getting answers to the age-old question. Where do we come from? More of that when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs>